the red-tailed black cockatoo. Even at a distance, they can be identified by their classic helmet-like head shape. Red-tailed black cockatoos occur in any habitat, as long as there are significantly large trees for nesting and available water. In the southern and western sections of the country, it's much less common and there are concerns about the continued survival of some subspecies. Shortage of large trees for nesting is the major reason for the decline. Red-tailed black cockatoos are often seen in trios made up of an adult pair and their offspring. Although sometimes two eggs are laid, only one chick is ever raised. Young birds develop slowly and spend almost three months inside their nest. After fledging, even though they can often feed themselves, they seem to still crave the closeness of their parents. When the adults tire of the constant begging, they simply ignore the chick or fly off. Adult males take four years to attain their adult plumage and the trademark crimson red tail feathers. Females and young birds have characteristic spots throughout their head and body feathers and orange or yellow coloured barred tails. Red-tailed black cockatoos are opportunistic feeders and often take advantage of whatever food crop is seasonably abundant. These birds have moved into a forest after a controlled burn to enjoy a bonanza of charcoal favourite seeds. Yet no red-tailed black cockatoo can resist the seeds of a casuarina tree. Where available, these seeds make up a considerable part of their main diet. These birds on a beach in Darwin get both a meal and a waterfront view. This flock has gathered to feed in a peanut field in the Atherton Tablelands region in Queensland.
Taking advantage of this unique smorgasbord, this flock has reached over 300 individuals. But with producing only one chick each year, this large number is actually deceiving. And with such low reproduction rates, each fledgling is extremely valuable to the overall population. Throughout the centuries, cockatoos, like other members of the parrot family, have been kept in people's homes in aviaries and cages. For those that truly love these amazing birds, it's hard to match the thrill of hearing the sound of hundreds of cockatoos living wild and free in their native Australia. Since the advent of Australian settlement, one Australian parrot has colonised practically every type of open country habitat. Boisterous and colourful, every Australian instantly recognises the galah. Even in desolate, rocky, dry areas, galahs can thrive. As long as there are stunted trees to nest in and sufficient water, they can make their home. The only habitat that galahs actually avoid is wet rainforest. Extremely adaptable, they have simply taken advantage of land changes and the development of agriculture. Cattle watering sources have been the biggest influence in their expansion of numbers. Galahs are very community orientated and pairs that nest near each other get together and form loose flocks. Joined with their neighbours, they roam the surrounding areas in search of food. They normally never move any more than 10 kilometres from the nest tree. A mated pair is the basic social unit and pairs remain together until the death of one partner.
Any large flocks are made up of juveniles and non-breeding adults. With such a varied diet, galahs often have found enough food early in their day. That means they have plenty of spare time on their hands to engage in social interaction and mischief. This is Australia's most common large parrot, and being so makes it susceptible to being underappreciated and easy to overlook. Yet with its beautiful coloration, this is a gorgeous bird and an Australian treasure. High in the mountains of southeastern Australia lives another cockatoo. This is the home of the Gang Gang. Gang Gang cockatoos are highly seasonal in their movements. And although sturdy and owl-like in body shape, they are excellent flyers and highly mobile. Females like this one are uniform lead grey in colour. By two years of age, males have acquired a brilliant red crest. No other bird in Australia has this unusual looking top knot. During winter time, gang gangs can often be found in lowland urban parks and gardens. By spring, most of these little cockatoos have retreated to the cool mountains. Here they seek out a nest hollow in which to raise a family. This male is standing guard and keeping a watchful eye out for predators while the female feeds nearby. Once the coast is clear, he joins her to feed. Gangang -gang cockatoos are often tame and trusting while feeding. They are adept at manipulating food with their dexterous feet. No other parrot in Australia has refined this skill to this extent. Their feet are used almost like a human hand. Loss of habitat and cutting of large trees as civilization has encroached on the Gang Gang's habitat have left its numbers vulnerable. But with careful management, this species will be around for Australians to enjoy for generations. Australia's wooded dry country is home to one of the most beautiful cockatoos in the world. The Major Mitchell's cockatoo. Named after the explorer Sir Thomas Mitchell, it's universally accepted as one of the most beautiful parrots in the world.
Charismatic and full of personality, when excited it shows off by raising its stunning crest. Although it lives in dry areas, Major Mitchells are usually never far from some sort of water source and if necessary will fly great distances daily to their favourite places to drink. This one is drinking at a pond at world famous Bower Station. Although they still raise cattle here, over the years the station has become famous as a bird sanctuary, drawing bird lovers from around the world. Unlike some species, Major Mitchells are not specialists when it comes to food. They feed on a variety of seeds, berries, wild nuts and insect larvae. One of their favourite foods is the paddy melon. Paddy melons grow in some of the harshest of climates and few other cockatoos seek out this unusual wild fruit. These exquisite cockatoos are usually found in small groups and prefer to have company while dining. Nesting is quite another matter. Pairs may feed together, but patrol a wide area around their nest. And neighbours are definitely not welcome. Unlike its relative, the Galar, Major Mitchell's numbers are decreasing. The issue lies in their preferences for large tracts of land with an abundance of standing trees. With fewer large trees for nesting, competition among pairs becomes fierce, as they will not nest in the same area as another pair. Major Mitchell's cockatoos are a world treasure. Continued conservation measures to ensure its long-term survival are vital. Even the most local of Australians, accustomed to seeing parrots every day, can't help but appreciate the beauty of this stunning bird.
In the lightly wooded areas in the interior region of Australia lives one of the most familiar of all Australian parrots. The cockatiel. Second only to the budgie in popularity as a cage bird, cockatiels take advantage of man-altered habitats. In these areas, wheat is often a favourite food. While foraging on the ground, cockatiels can easily go undetected. Their coloration blends well with the surrounding ground cover. Males and females have dramatically different plumages. Males can easily be told from females by their yellow faces and bright orange cheek patches. Cockatiels are highly nomadic and when breeding season arrives they prefer to nest near water. This pair has chosen a location with a view overlooking an outback river. In the heat of the day, the male stays vigilant as his nearly grown chicks are close by in a nest hollow. When this chick is about 30 days old, he will leave the hollow and join his parents on this remote cattle station. Seeing such a familiar cage bird flying wild and free in its native Australia is an unforgettable experience.